really looking forward to today. We've got some awesome stuff going on. But we're going to have to wait for this train to pass. on everybody it's your favorite introvert here and today we're gonna do what probably I enjoy most about drones and that is air to air photography that's right this is something that if done properly provides the most excitement the best reward and it just overall is enjoyable to go out there and create the complexity of getting some of these shots is what I find the most enjoyable so, you know, the best thing is you take a bunch of photos and you get those like one or two that are just super awesome and super exciting and you share them all over the place. It's just fun. It's exciting. Love the Inspire 2. Love the new Phantom 4 V 2.0. Really enjoying these platforms. Been enjoying the Inspire for over a year now, so that's really fun. But today, we're going to be going over what I do to set up for air to air photography we're out here at the flying field again it's early morning no one's out here so the safety aspects have been all calculated and taken into consideration but we had a roll of thunderstorms go through the valley and we have this nice pretty hazy background so hopefully that leads us into some amazing shots so let's go ahead and get into it so what you're going to need are at least two drones it doesn't matter what make model or series they are they must be able to carry ND filters on it because you will need ND filters typically in the morning I'll use a 4 or an 8 PL filter which is a polarizer uh, that just makes the colors pop uh, you definitely want some contrast between your drone and whatever background you're shooting sometimes your backdrop is the sky sometimes your backdrop is foliage in the back of the woods there and then maybe some railroad crossings but anyway uh, we're going to set our shutter speed to 1 40th and then we're going to try to calculate everything down there you're going to want your f-stop or your or your aperture your f-stop your aperture that number slider that goes 4.5 5.0 all the way up to 12 sometimes on some drones you're definitely going to need that as well if not don't worry about it because you'll get a solid background if you have the spark the spark is really fun too because if you have the shallow depth of field selected it, it it's pretty fun to get into with that. So today we're going to be doing with the Inspire 2 and the DJI Phantom. I'm going to get these birds set up. I'm going to go over the in-screen display and uh, show you what I set up baseline. Obviously when you're in the air you're going to adjust the camera settings to what you're wanting to get out of the shot because obviously you know the the lighting conditions may change and you just you may want the blurry background over the sharp uh, contrasted background. So uh, it, it definitely changes. It's a very dynamic state when you're filming air-to-air -air photography, so just be ready to make changes on the fly. Uh, and this is a good idea to just understand your drones. Um, and it's also a good way to fully understand your drones. You know, you, you get familiar with the settings. You get familiar with, you know, quick and rapid changes in drone photography and stuff like that. So uh, it makes you a better pilot. It makes you better at maneuvering your drone and getting everything into shot, into focus. Uh, because the drones are constantly moving so your focus points are changing as well so it, it's just the complexities are what it gets me excited so let's go ahead and set up I'm really excited to get into this and um, show you guys what I do so starting out I'm using a Neewer set of ND and polarizer filters it's the gold series here just just the three I have a 4 8 and 16 polarized filter we're gonna start off with the four right now you know, oh, why'd you go with Newer? Well, I went with Newer, or however you want to pronounce it, because it was cheap. For these three polarizer filters, it was $20. Prime shipped to my door in two days, so you can't beat that. And with what we do in aerial, air to air photography, having those expensive filters, it just doesn't make sense because, I mean, the, the complexity of the shot. You know, if you nail, you're going to get one or two crispy photos out of the deal anyway. So, you know, spinning an arm and a leg just to get, you know, whatever extra benefit out of it, which I haven't really seen a benefit from using the overpriced uh, filters yet. So that's why I stick to the cheap ones. The whole point in ND filters is for you to get out and shoot and get the proper exposure and frame rate. So... You know, if you can do that for 20 bucks over 100 bucks, I'd do that any day. So this is the ND4 
polarizer filter. As you can see, we're pretty underexposed here. Let's pull up the histogram is on the bottom left hand side here. So we're pretty underexposed here. If you see in the bottom left of the histogram, you see that big peak down on the left hand side. So the left hand side is your underexposure. The right hand side is your overexposure. So the best position to get this in will be to try to get everything dead center. You want to make sure that nothing is being blown out or nothing is too underexposed that you can't retrieve in post. So we'll go ahead, check our camera settings, photo. So your camera settings are interesting. You can use the auto exposure bracketing, which does the three to five shots. What I've found for this is a lot of the times we'll use this to get pictures of landscapes. We'll be able to boost the shadows and we'll bring down the highlights. But for the AEB, what I find is since the drone is constantly moving in 3D space, sometimes you'll get a photo where it's presented in one position and in the next photo it will be presented a few inches over one way and the next photo will be presented in a few uh, inches down. Um, so it, it's, it's a very complex and dynamic state, as I said earlier, but sometimes you get it, the perfect conditions where it's dead center for all three to five sh shots. I would recommend three because that's less, less photos to go wrong. So we'll do a couple in AEB and we'll do a couple in single shot. All right, so right now we're looking at ISO of 100, aperture of 5, shutter speed of 1 over 40. And right now, if you look at the histogram, bottom left-hand corner, everything seems to be nicely uh, in the borders there. It could be uh, contrasted out a little bit in post, but we're not going to, you know, stress ourselves out over that. That's basically the camera settings that I start off with. Again, we're AEB at 3 shots, 16 by 9. We're shooting JPEG and RAW so we can bring it into Lightroom or Photoshop, depending on how we want to edit this. Our white balance is auto white balance, just because it's one less thing to worry about. Our style is custom. My style right now is plus zero on the uh, sharpness, minus three on the contrast, and minus three on saturation. So we can always change those in post, no worries. And my color profile is set to true color because I'm not really worried about that right now. So that's the settings for the Phantom 4. Let's get into the Inspire and see what's going on. All right, we are in the Inspire 2 now, and we're going to keep the ISO at 100. We're going to keep the shutter at 1 over 40. And for the aperture, we're going to get it to where it brings the histogram all together to where we're not under or overexposed. And we're going to pull that and make it all nice and tidy. We're going to go into the picture and photo settings. It's going to be 16 by 9. We're going to use RAW and JPEG. We're going to keep it at true color and we're just going to set the contrast and the saturation real quick here to minus three respectively. Now once that is done, I'm going to touch over a little bit of the aperture here. So if you want the background of your subject to be blurred, you're going to want a lower aperture rate and we will set that accordingly. And if you want a in focus background, you will set a higher aperture rate to allow for your subject and background to be in focus. So once you have that set up, and your lights in the histogram bars, we're gonna go ahead and set up our first flight. All right, so what we're looking at is the camera of the Phantom 4 as we look at the Inspire 2. Basically, what I'm gonna do here is the clouds came out in force, so it reduced the amount of light available. So the ND4 filter is just fine. We're gonna adjust the aperture and ISO to get it in the histogram where I want it to. I want it to get a little bit of a darker feel to add a little more cinematic touch. But I wanted to touch on the shutter speed for a second and why I have it at 1 40th. This will allow for your rotor disc to go around a complete arc so it shows that there is definite motion in the blades. It'll basically give a perfect disc or in my experience it gives a perfect disc for your rotor showing that it is in motion and that it is flying instead of having the props frozen in time. If you have say like a 250 shutter speed or higher um, that'll tend to freeze the props in the air making it look like the drone is about to fall out of the sky so i personally don't like that that's why i choose the shutter speed of 1 over 40 and uh, i try to keep the iso at 100 and the aperture i want the background to be a little bit blurred so i'm going to drop the aperture down 
uh, just a little bit here as well. But basically, all it is from this point on is you flying around as close as you can get to the drone as you're comfortable with and taking photos of it, making sure that you, um, if you have autofocus, making sure that you tap on the drone and try to take a picture of it as it is within the square of the autofocus. And if you're doing manual focus, then you want to make sure that your manual focus and you have the focus peaking turned on to make sure that your drone is highlighted and in focus as much as possible and this will ensure that your drone is crystal clear since your drone is the subject you want that to be the focal point and having it crystal clear having that focus peaking on your drone will help you out in the long run there so here i'm going to show you uh, i'm going to take the three photos the uh, aeb auto exposure bracketing i'm going to take these photos i'm going to transfer them over into lightroom and i'm going to show you how i composite them into the hdr and i'm also going to show you what it looks like when the drone is moving as you see the inspire 2 is moving a lot and that is typical that is very typical for the inspire 2 the drone that i've found to be the most locked on is the mavic pro which is crazy um, it's the smaller consumer drone, but the Mavic Pro is the most stable in flight in my experience. So as you see, the Inspire 2 is just bouncing around. So just be aware of that. You are going to have to track it. You are going to have to keep an eye on your drone and make sure that you know, you're keeping your distance, your separation, and you won't have a mid-air collision. But get as close as you feel comfortable to the drone. Get it as much of the frame as possible. Remember your rule of thirds and just have fun with it, guys. So Let's hop on into Lightroom and do a little bit of editing. All right, now that we are in Lightroom, we're going to select two sets of three from our AEB photos. We're going to import them into the library, transition into the Develop tab, and we are going to highlight the first three photos. Then we're going to right click and go to Photo Merge and HDR. This will open up our panel for HDR. We're going to leave the auto align selected for this round, and we are going to go ahead and process these photos. It will take some time to render, but it will render out an extra photo. So you will see four photos. You're going to enter into that photo, and here we have the HDR photo. If you notice here how we have multiple sets of Inspire 2s floating around in the screen. This was what I was talking about with the aircraft moving around in 3D space. It will end up looking weird like this. So let's move on to our next set of photos. For the next three photos, we're going to uncheck the auto align feature and we're going to go ahead and process these photos. Once it's done processing, you'll notice again how we have movement in our photos. The three photos are not properly aligned. The best thing about shooting raw for this is when you shoot AEB, you get your selection of different ISO settings. It shoots one stop high and one stop low, as well as the settings that you have selected. So this gives you three opportunities to hit the right form of exposure that you're looking for. So this is another good reason just to go ahead and shoot in AEB as well. So let's go ahead and move on to a single shot photo and we will go ahead and edit this in Lightroom. All right, here we have the Mavic Air from an instance before where I was flying the Phantom 4 Pro V2 and the Mavic Air and as you can see in this shot, it is a little overexposed, but we'll be able to drop that down using the exposure slider. We're going to make some extra adjustments. We're going to add some vignette. We're going to change uh, the highlights and the shadows as well. We're going to make these minor adjustments, and this is what the final image looks like. I hope you like this video. I hope it helps you out. I hope it's inspired you to go out and catch some air-to-air -air footage if you do. Drop a comment down below. Give me the link to your video that you have. I'd love to see what you have in store. If you have an Instagram account, send me your Instagram. I would love to check out your photos. You can go ahead and follow me at The Introvert Speaks. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hit that like button if you like the video. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. And if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. I appreciate all your support. I will see you next video.